Hi, this is Bruce the Accounting Guy again today, and what we're going to be doing is working more on Chapter 1. You know, last time we defined an asset, a liability, an owner's equity, and the revenue and expenses, and how they all came into play with our general accounting equation. Today what we're going to do is, is we're going to apply to that equation transaction analysis. Now the first thing you need to remember is, is that accounting is a double bookkeeping entry system. And that means that whenever we do record a transaction, we do affect at least two accounts. And you'll see that today as we do this transaction analysis. Another thing I want to remind you about when we do the transaction analysis is, is that I will be using specific account titles. And those account titles will be used throughout the course and you yourself need to memorize those account titles. So when you do your homework, the, the homework that you do should look exactly like the solutions that are placed online for you. Not only the account titles, but also the dollar amounts. So if you're not coming up with those dollar amounts and those exact account titles, then you are doing your uh, homework wrong. Right, so get used to using those account titles and, and working with it in the fashion that we are. So when you do your homework, don't forget to do everything exactly the way it is presented online, also the way it's shown exactly on your text, and exactly the way that I'm showing it right here in the videos. Right, that's very, very important that you do it in that fashion. So let's get started on transaction analysis. I'm going to use some that are the same or very similar to what's in your textbook uh, and, and make sure that you do understand the actual concept of, of this entire thing. So let's take a look at what I have on this chart right now and, um, and go through it. Now, when you do your homework in your... Um, in the, in the working papers that you purchase, they will have a lot of these headings already set up for you. That's the purpose of the working papers, so you don't have to worry about those items. In other words, and notice that we do have the basic accounting equation still here. Assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity. <clears throat> and what we're going to do is we're going to take each one of those transactions and we're going to, we are going to label a dollar amount under each of these specific accounts. Now notice under assets, I have cash. We discussed that that was an asset. Accounts receivable, which is the future rights of money due from someone else. We have supplies, and, and the supplies are goods that we're going to purchase for future use, so we call them an asset. And then we have equipment. All of these items are asset because of more that we have of each, the more the company's worth. Under liabilities right now, just in the example we have, we have accounts payable. And under owner's equity, we have what's called R. Neal Capital. Now, the last time I did not mention, but when an owner puts money in, we actually call it their capital account. So let's get started on this. And you can also follow along in your text. It will be very similar, if not the same. And we're going to have this person, R. Neal. He's going to start a business. And when he starts his business, he's going to put $15,000 worth of cash into this business. Now, all you need to say to yourself is, what really happened here? He put in cash. So we know we're going to affect the cash of the company. And that would be an increase of cash of, of course, $15,000. The other thing that he affected was whenever we have an owner put money in, we call it an increase in owner's equity. Because you remember, there were four things that we said could affect owner's equity. Two made them go up, the owner putting money in and income or revenue, and two things that made it go down when the owner took money out, which was a withdrawal or drawing, and expenses. So in this case, we had cash increase 15000 and we had our Neal capital increase 15000 And what we would do to reflect that is write those two dollar amounts right into those columns. So now at this point, we do have cash of $15,000, and we do have his capital account increasing fifteen. Now, the other thing I want you to realize, and it'll make more sense on the next video that we have, is, is that whenever we put anything into owner's equity, we have to classify what it was. It will be one of four things. It will be their investment. That's the owner putting money in. It could be a withdrawal, the money, owner taking money out. Or it could be revenue that would increase it or expenses that decrease it. So whenever we put anything into this column, we have to classify what that item is. All right? Now, the next thing that we're going to do is, is we're going to, let's see, purchase supplies. We're going to purchase a piece of equipment for cash of $7,000. All right, so when we go out and we purchase that piece of equipment, of course, I said we're going to purchase it for cash, so that's a use of cash. So we should be aware of the fact that cash is going to go 
down. Okay, and so we would subtract seven thousand dollars from cash. But what did we get for that cash? We got equipment. So our equipment would go up, and therefore the next adjustment to this actual equation would therefore be an incre an increase to the equipment, but a decrease to cash. And if you want, you can. It's up to you when you're doing your work. You can update your column numbers if you would like to do so. I have done this on this chart here for you. You can see I've moved cash to $8,000, and I have updated the equipment to seven, and my owner's equity I've pulled down the total of 15. Now, the other thing that you need, excuse me, to understand is the fact that this equation, assets equal liabilities, plus the owner's equity should always stay in balance. Whenever we're done uh, placing anything into this equation, the equation at the end should always be equal. And at this point, if you look, you can see all we did in this entry here, this transaction entry, was exchange dollars out of cash and turned it into a different asset called equipment. And therefore, when we updated our totals, we still have $8,000 worth of cash, $7,000 worth of equipment. That's a total of 15 and our liabilities plus our owner's equity is still equal to 15. So the equation always stays in balance. On our next transaction, we go out and we buy some supplies, and we buy them on account. Now, if you recall from class last time, or the video last time, I told you that when we purchase something on account, we're saying that we'll pay for it later. So therefore, we are going to increase our supplies by the amount we purchased, 1600 Now, again, some of you may want to use the word supplies and call it an expense, but I want you in this course, this is an accounting concepts course, to realize that when we initially purchase supplies in this class for any entries we make, we'll always record it as an asset. We could call it supplies or supplies inventory. We will, the reason that we call it an asset is because we have the supplies now. We're not going to use them till later, so they're an asset because they represent future goods that we're going to use. When we use the supplies, then we can, as we'll see in a later chapter, expense them out. So we're going to increase our supplies 1600 Now, notice I said we purchased them on account. What's that mean? It means that we didn't use cash. So there'll be no reduction of cash, but rather we now have an accounts payable, and we would have to increase that accounts payable 1600 So as we update our numbers this time around, there's our $1,600 increase to accounts payable. There's our $1,600 increase to supplies. And as we update our, our numbers further this time, we can see that our equation is still going to stay in balance for us. We'll have $8,000 worth of cash. We'll have $1,600 worth of supplies and $7,000 worth of equipment. That's a total of $16,600. And sure enough, when I add my liabilities plus my owner's equity, I still have that same total. Again, we haven't put anything in owner's equity yet, but when we do, we have to classify what it would be. This time, what we're going to do is we're going to go out and we're going to do some work for one of our customers. And we're going to do $1,200 worth of, uh, of, of service uh, work for them, and they're going to pay us in cash. So what happened then? The easiest thing to always uh, ask yourself on any of these transaction analysis are, did we affect cash? And if we did, then that's the first thing you should always attack. And as I said, we, we did the work, and they paid us in cash. $1,200, so we would increase cash, as we'll see, $1,200 over here. Now, as we increase that cash by $1,200, the other thing we need to realize is, is that I need to have the other side stay the same, but what am I increasing by $1,200? Well, we did some work, so we're going to call that service revenue. And one of the four things that we said could affect owner's equity was revenue. We said whenever we own revenue, it makes it earn revenue, it makes it go up. So there is the increase of the $1,200 for the service revenue. Notice that we still we increase the asset side by $1,200. We increase the owner's equity side by $1,200. And therefore, when we update our equation, once again, it will stay in balance. If we add up all the numbers, we will see that, again, our equation is still in balance. Our assets will equal our liabilities. 
Again, when we get it later into the chapter, you'll see why it's important that we had to label these. Another transaction that we're going to do is going to be that we are going to um, take out an ad in the newspaper for $250. We put that ad in, and they put it on our account, which means we'll pay it later. Now, did we affect cash? No, we did not, because we said put it on our account. So cash was not affected, but if we put it on our account, it means that our account's payable will have to go up an additional 250 So we will increase accounts payable 250 but what else happens? Well, we had advertising expense. And remember, expenses are one of the things that makes the owner's equity go down. So under here, we subtract out expenses. And again, we actually have to, as I said, anytime we put anything in owner's equity, we have to clarify what it is. And in this case, it's advertising expense. And then when we get into the next video, it will make more sense why we have to break them all out. Again, we didn't touch this side of the equation at all. And it's possible to only touch one side of the equation and not the other. In this side, we increased our accounts payable, but we reduced our equity, which really had a, a zero effect on the equation. We did that also up in, the, in transaction number two. We decreased cash, but we increased equipment by exactly the same amount and didn't have any effect on this side. So it's possible to affect one side of the equation, but the net effect would be zero. Once we update it, since our assets didn't change, our total liabilities and owner's equity didn't change either. We just had this one go up to 50 and this one go down $250, and that's all there really was to it. We're going to go out and we're going to do $3,500 more worth of work for, for customers, and this time what they're going to do, though, is they're, we're only going to get $1,500 in cash. The other $2,000 is going to be put on their account. So we did $3,500 worth of work. How much cash was affected? Only, what did I say, $1,500. So we will only increase cash $1,500. The rest of it was put on account, which now means that other term, which is it's money due us, so that's an accounts receivable, and we will increase the accounts receivable by that balance. So there's the $1,500 increase in cash. There's the $2,000 increase in accounts receivable. That's a total of the $3,500 worth of revenue we earned. And, of course, since it's revenue, we will have to increase that service revenue by $3,500. And there's the increase to service revenue of $3,500. And, again, anytime I put something in this column, I have to classify what it is. When I update my numbers, my assets plus... Well, I mean, still will equal my liabilities plus owner's equity. Both sides, these four numbers, will equal these two. Okay, I want to jump down. Uh, you can read the rest of them yourselves. I do want to show you how this whole story unfolds. There's other examples that are um, here. Okay, uh, I do want to jump down to number seven, transaction seven, if you look carefully, is, is that we paid rent expense of $900, salaries of... I'm sorry, rent expense is six, salary is expense of nine, and utilities of two. And we sent out different checks and we paid those out. And notice that's a total of $1,700 in cash. So we subtract out the 700 from cash, yet we have to show each one of those separate. We have to show a different amount in detail for each one. I want to jump down to the end and go through the last transaction, and that is, is that what the owner did was, is, is that the owner, excuse me, was getting ready to watch a big NASCAR event and decided that he would invite his buddies over to watch it on his TV and decided his TV was small. So he said, I see a really good special down at Best Buy for $1,300. And he pulls the $1,300 out of his business and buys some and a and personal item for him. Now, again, that $1,300 did not relate to the business. It's not an expense of the business, but he pulled it out so you can see we reduced cash by $1,300. And that was personal funds for the owner. And, again, remember when we said an owner puts money in, it makes owner's equity go up personally. And when he puts, takes money out personally, it makes his owner's equity go down. And we call that a drawing or a withdrawal. And again, we put it in this column, and we have to classify what it is. Notice that after everything's updated, our assets still total 18050 and our liabilities and our owner's equity 
still total 18,050. One last word to you about this, and that is, is, is that also over here in liabilities, generally what you will find are not just accounts payable, but also notes payable. Two, and that notes payable would have its own column also in this transaction analysis. Again, it's important for you to understand that in this transaction analysis, you should have the correct titles. You should be using the correct titles that the text use. You should come up with the correct dollar amounts. You do not need to update your totals all the time like I have in here. I believe the working paper sometimes will give you a column afterwards to update the totals just so you can see your assets equal your liabilities and owner's equity. Um, the important thing is, is that when you get down to the bottom, that they do what equal. Assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity. That's all I have for you today, and bye for now.